Now today I'm going to be assembling an Egg Finder RX board and we'll be going step by step here so you can see how this process works. So the first step is to mount the voltage regulator. That is this piece right here. So let's get these little bits here out of the way. And what it wants you to do is locate the uh, large pad and three small pads. That's this one right here. And we're going to heat up this pad with a soldering iron and we're going to place a little bit of solder on it. So I'll just talk you through here as I go. And starting out I have the soldering station I'm using set to 500 degrees. So we will see how well that works or if I have to uh, go up to higher temperature here or not. It's supposed to be low melting point solder. It's melting on the iron a little bit now. Can I get it on the pad? So maybe starting to think about going on the pad. All right, yeah, I'm going to go a little bit higher on that. Uh, we'll try, let's try 600. All right. Normally I like to go at 700, but since we're doing, yeah, that seems to be working a lot better here. Okay, so now we have that little tin pad there. Now we will take this part out of the carrier tape and we'll place it right here. I only had one cup of coffee this morning so alright. There it is and let me uh, there. I got this to just kind of hold it down there we go. I like the little needles I'm getting on here. And we'll go up in temperature a little more. Go up to 650. Of course, it could be this tip too. I wish I had a little bit of a different tip to use, but. three little legs and then I can clean that up once I get the bottom legs tacked on here. There we go. Flip this back over and see if I can beautify this one a little bit. Of course, this is the heat sink of the voltage regulator here. So, there we go. That looks a lot better. Now we're going to mark the 2.2K resistor. And they gave me three of them, but I only need one, apparently. And that's going to be to this one right here. And again, we're just going to solder one side of the pad just to start off with. There we go. Nice 
clear. I don't have Parkinson's disease. But there we go. Doesn't take too long. But again, I can beautify that once I get the other side on here soldered up. Oh, yeah, man, it just tombstoned on me. this time. Switch to my phone here because my DSLR ran out of battery. I was just in the middle of trying to get a resistor to cooperate. Alright, let's see if I can beautify that without tombstoning it again. I think I got it this time. Now the two 10 microfarad capacitors. Before I do these, let me just check those resistor, that resistor, make sure it's still good here. All right, the meter says 2.2001K. All right, so it's good. goes. I'm not sure it flowed onto the pad though. There we go. Alright, all the joints look good. Uh, the final part is to mount the LED and that's easy. That's through holes. Now let's see here. Okay, the long lead here. Well, these leads is a little bit longer than the other one. That goes into the plus side. So, let me go ahead and mount this. And what I could do, I suppose, is mount this to the uh, power LED on the board I actually have, or on the box I'm making. But we'll have two power LEDs here. Just bend these, whoops, just bend these leads out like that, just to kind of hold it in place there. Come on, focus. All right.
Okay, and then we'll clip them off. And there's our LED. Now, to do this guy, and let me review the instructions one more time about this one. All right, so first we're going to tape the, I guess you can call this a motherboard, <laughs> onto our work service. And we are not going to be covering, we are, we are going to mount the RF module, of course. This is just to prevent things from moving. And we will carefully position this to make sure it's lined up correctly. And to ensure it is, we're going to put an LED pad or an LED lead. Right there. And right there. And that will keep the board properly positioned while we solder. And it says you really don't want to overheat this board because there's some very small components on it and if you get any solder splash on there it's going to ruin it. So... Let's cover it up. And it wants us to wait 30 seconds between mountings. On. No, that didn't work. Oh, shoot, the iron just shut off. Iron should be back up to temperature. There we go. That's better. And the station likes to turn itself off after a little while. I guess it thought it was not being used. All right, so we got that one. All right. I'll give it a few moments here. And while that's cooling off, we can take these uh, LED leads out now. And now we will go ahead and do up the rest of the module here. It wants us to wait a full 30 seconds between, so we'll speed this up.
just have to do the antenna lead. It wants you to put a little toothpick in there. I'm not sure if I have anything like that around here, so I'm going to try very hard to use the minimum amount of solder I need. Because these holes over here didn't fill up, so hopefully this isn't going to be the one that I mess up. <laughs> Not boarding well because I gotta put my iron. Let's try again here, real quick. Come on. All right, let's let that cool off and we'll take another shot at it here. I reposition myself. Okay, there we go. Alright, now we're going to mount the antenna. I'm diverging from the instructions which has you put a 90 degree bend in the antenna because of the box that I'm going to be using. Uh, this is going to be mounted in the box like this and the antenna is just going to go straight out through the top. So it looks like the box is it almost fits into the nice little guides there, but not quite, so I'll probably just use some. But from the final location, it's going to stick out like that ish. I'll be doing a little hole there. Might have to bend it just a tiny bit, but that's how it's going to go. Just cut this to 80 millimeters in length, minus what's in the board. I'm going to solder the bottom side first. And I might actually need to move up to 700 degrees for this because well, we'll try it at uh, 650 first. Solder the top in. And normally you would put a 90 degree bend in here. Oh, come on. And I also wanted you to put tape on here, but I didn't do that. But normally you'd make a 90 degree bend and solder it along here but like I said it's going to be going through my box so that is the Hope RF module or the egg finder receiver um, I haven't put the USB port on it yet because I'm actually going to be using batteries from in here I also have an HCO6 Bluetooth module which I will be uh, using with this. Alright, now I will go ahead and cut this to 80 millimeters, which would be 8 centimeters. Alright, and I'll hit that with a file when I get home. Now let's see if I can get this in here through the hole I drilled. And hopefully I drilled that hole large enough the heat shrink to go through. Alright, looks like it will. Now that I kind of see how this is going to go in here, now I can, let's see here, how will I want to wire in my HCO6, probably maybe back to back like that might be a good way. So I will do that now. 
All right, I backed up so we can see the bigger picture a little bit better. I'm gonna install this HCO6 on the egg finder. And the first thing I will do is tin the wires. I think the way I'll do this is to feed these three wires through one of these holes here. Oh, maybe I'll do this hole. Then just solder them in right on the top there. So, the red one to 3.3 volts, the black to ground. And I just chose the green one to hook up to the RXD on that board, so RXD to RXD on this board here. Normally they want you to uh, go ahead and test it with GPS first. So I'm not being technically correct in, in that sense. And let's see, I'll use one of their supplied zip ties. Zip tie these guys down. Actually, what I'll probably do is I'll take my ground or this isn't really a ground but it's going to be the negative lead for my batteries and get this through here that should give me enough slack actually I suppose I can just solder this in from the back too, but uh, just for consistency I'll do it like this. do now is so I'll take this there we go now let's see here how to mount these and I'll see if I have some heat shrink tubing to put around this HCO6 board just to keep it off that and I might also use some uh, hot melt just to keep them together and then the only other thing I need uh, I need something for my negative lead on my power light and I need to do my positive lead onto the board here so I'll do that next after I find some heat shrink Put some heat shrink on the HCO6 and I'll probably use some double sided sticky tape or something to do the final mounting, but right now I'm going to do the power switch. All right, a little bit more tinning.
I just need to connect my power light. I'm gonna put a little wire on my LED here. Tack it on. Yep, I'm just gonna hook it around this wire here. Alright, so let's put some batteries in this and see what happens. Nope, and it was already on, and I see lights flashing. I see an on switch, or I see the on LED. The HCO6 appears to be flashing. There we go. So here is the RX. If I can get them both in frame here. Turn that on. And I'm getting a green flashing light on the receiver, which means it should mean that it's receiving packets from the transmitter. And so, all right, I'll take this outside and I'll hook it up to my phone and we'll see if... Uh, if we have signs of life. So here's the rocket. <laughs>